in all honesty, uh, I have once thought that these two years uh, might be put to better use. And that was during the start of my junior college days. My perspective on this changed entirely when I overheard a conversation between my mom and my dad. My mom was asking my dad, uh, why are you still keeping like your field back and stuff like that? So his reply was that if Singapore was to ever go to war right now, he would drop everything, put on his uniform and fight. And um, back then he was already in his late 50s. And that, that just really struck me because I was still young, uh, able-bodied. What's my excuse? Ever since that day, uh, my thoughts on NS had really, really changed and I really wanted to give my best. I really just wanted to give my all in national service and not let myself down, but also not let my parents down. My time in BMT in OCS uh, came as a culture shock because I didn't expect the military environment to be so challenging. It was generally a, quite a rocky road, so I definitely faced a series of ups and downs, but it was incredibly rewarding. I mean, uh, when we were trainees, it's the first time like everyone is meeting. There are a lot of unfamiliar faces, a lot of different people from different backgrounds with different ideals. But in the end, we realised that we can no longer think about ourselves, you know, our own individual actions really affect everyone around us. And that's when we start coming together and realising that we have to act as one moving body. We have to care and think about those around us. And I think it's through that, through all these uh, blood, sweat and tears, that we start forming a brotherhood, we start forming friendships that will last through the difficult times, through the tough moments during training. And these friendships are the things that I'll hold close to me. I was mainly in charge of sensors. It's for surveillance of the skies and monitoring of any threats that we might be posed. And our OC back then, uh, Captain To, he really believed that uh, if a flight is a family, anytime anyone is done with their own tasking, they would go on and try to help their fellow uh, flight mates, re outfits as well. It's a very tiring time when you're out in the field, especially for days. We all want to achieve mission success together as a whole team. That can't happen without our teammates supporting us. Essentially, leave no man behind. The friendships I forged together with my brothers in arms, especially in 160 Squadron, you know, I'll truly never forget them. In fact, now uh, I'm in college, but I still miss every single one of them every day. I miss those times and I miss those experiences. The most memorable moment at 160 Squadron would actually be the little things. Uh, it's simply just having meals, like breakfast or lunch, with my fellow friends, uh, teammates and superior officers. So we would just sit down and talk about our personal problems, our personal lives, our personal interests. And then we would give, uh, give each other perspective and thoughts on various issues. I think that really comes to show that we're not only growing in military experience, but also as friends and family. And that's something that means a lot to me, knowing that these people are the people I can count on in times of war and in times of peace. I really appreciate that. To today, we're still meeting up. We still text one another, we still check in on one another. And I think that's something that will truly stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, because he's my first child and I don't know what will he be doing in the BMT or whatever. But I told myself, okay, I have to let go of my fear and I had to let my son grow. Mm. Actually, he's quite a gentle boy. So, I hope that he won't suffer in camp. I told him, please, you know, work as a team. Because I was a leader when I was in school. So I, I always believe in this, work as a team. There's no one man he rules. After his enlistment, I saw he was more tough, more disciplined. He suspect he spit himself every morning. Wow, I was so touched by his move, that by his action. I said, oh my God, it's really changed. I really can see a gentleman in my house, beside my husband. Yeah, he's another one. He's the upcoming gentleman. I feel like it's truly an honour and an amazing experience 
So the Bakun before NS and after NS. Um, I would say that during my time in the military, especially as a trainee in BMT or in OCS, um, the one thing that I constantly thought about was home, you know, my family, my close friends and my relatives. It's something that I really neglected uh, before I enlisted. Every day I would just think about how much I miss them, how much I crave to be back home, you know, just hugging my parents. And I don't usually even think about hugging my parents. So, I would just ask myself, like, right now, I only don't get to see them for maybe five days a week or more at times. But imagine if this was forever. I don't think um, I could live in a world like that, knowing that I did not do my best. So, to me, national service, uh, even though it may be tough, is definitely necessary for Singapore. I remember that um, during BMT the 12th, they asked where to write a letter. What writing letter? I keep on crying and crying. I said, oh my God, I miss him so much. So we will just um, try and make him um, make the home very comfortable to let him have a good rest. I will ask him what, you want, what he means and what you want to eat. I will just cook for him, just specially for him. I will hug him for a while, then talk to him. How is it like? These five days, then he will sit down and talk to us. The phrase that comes to my mind is, if not us, then who? Personally, I feel really proud to have been part of this legacy of uh, national servicemen serving our country for the past 55 years. Uh, I feel like it's truly an honour and an amazing experience. A big thank you to all the NS men, past and present. Because of you, we can live the life of security. Really appreciate from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much. <laughs>